We meet here today as the world continues to grapple with the worst international public health emergency in over a century. In its wake, COVID-19 has changed the way we live and work and has heralded a new normal in which virtual meetings provide a safe way for the world to continue engaging. It is my great pleasure to join you, as I have said, for the opening of the fourth Africa Health Agenda International Conference. And I congratulate AMREF Health Africa and the Africa Center for Disease Control and Prevention Africa for using this series of conferences to maintain a momentum on this most critical agenda. The theme of our conference this year, the decade for action, driving momentum to achieve universal health coverage in Africa, has a special significance in Africa and the world. The devastating social economic impacts of COVID-19 pandemic have demonstrated to all of us the centrality of health in our development efforts. Indeed, it is clear that our global economic and social recovery hinges on how effectively the global community, continental as well as regional bodies, and individual states are able to control diseases. I am pleased to note today the strong participation of our young people in this conference, as speakers, but also in this plenary session. The youth are a key constituency in driving momentum towards UHC, and they should never be sidelined. We should engage with and empower our young people and give them the knowledge and skills to take charge of their health. In this context, I would also urge the conference to give special attention to health issues that plague our young people, which include teenage pregnancies, alcohol and substance abuse, lifestyle diseases, epidemics such as HIV and AIDS, as well as mental health, amongst others. We should also not lose sight of the fact that some of these health issues have been exasperated during this COVID-19 pandemic. Ladies and gentlemen, our forefathers envisioned the African continent that was free from poverty, ignorance, and disease. We have indeed made significant progress towards the realization of this vision. Diseases such as smallpox and polio have been eradicated due to sustained vaccination efforts. The burden of malaria cases on our continent has also been greatly reduced through effective coverage with insecticide treated nets and treatment of pregnant women and children in endemic areas. Equally encouraging, access to reproductive health services has improved maternal health outcomes, resulting in fewer maternal and child deaths across our continent. As a result, life expectancy in sub-Saharan sub Africa has increased from 40 years in the early 1960s to 64 years currently today. Alibit, with, a wide, with wide variations across our region. However, ladies and gentlemen, there is still plenty that needs to be done to achieve our SDG 3, which entails ensuring healthy lives and promoting the well being for all at all ages. African countries, including Kenya, continue to suffer from the double burden of disease, which can be drastically reduced with much better health care. Indeed, the preve prevalence of preventable diseases such as respiratory conditions, diarrheal diseases, HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria, as well as the rising burden of non-communicable diseases, including diabetes, cancer, 
cardiovascular disease such as heart attacks and chronic respiratory diseases such as asthma, continues to pose a very significant challenge to us on the continent. So ladies and gentlemen, what then should be the Africa health agenda for 2021? And this, if we are to achieve, as we have agreed, universal health coverage by the year 2030. I would like at this juncture to propose a few priority areas that I consider should anchor our health policies and programs as we move forward. The first is that we need to give greater priority to primary health care, including maternal and child health services, water sanitation, hygiene. Indeed, during this COVID period, all of us have been amazed by how simple hygiene practices, such as hand washing, introduced during this response to this pandemic, have reduced diarrheal and other diseases. The second is to increase access to healthcare services. Currently, about 600 million people across our continent do not have access to adequate health services. To address this, we must make increased investments in physical facilities, medical equipment, drugs, as well as trained personnel. In Kenya, we have equipped nearly 100 hospitals with advanced medical equipment in operating theaters, radiology, renal units, and intensive care units. We have also started a rollout of 24 primary health care facilities in the informal settlements of our capital city, Nairobi, where millions have little access to health care services. The third is that we need to make health care much more affordable. Many families on the African continent resort to selling off family assets in order to pay for medical care for their loved ones. Currently, at least 15 million people in Africa are pushed into poverty annually because of out-of-pocket health care payments. In Kenya, we have partly addressed the problem through the removal of user charges in dispensaries and health centers, as well as through the introduction of free maternity health services. Currently, we are embarking on a national program to ensure universal access to health hospital insurance fund through mandatory enrollment and a full government subsidy for the poor and most vulnerable. Fourth, we need to harness the innovative energy and creativity witnessed in Africa in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Many African countries are now locally producing protective personal equipment and other medical supplies. I urge health providers, investors, as well as our development partners participating in this conference to nurture such innovations, especially those that are led by our young people. These local level successes in fighting COVID-19 can be a strong foundation for increasing capacities and capabilities for domestic manufacturing of essential medical commodities, drugs, vaccines required in other disease and healthcare situations. Fifth, we need to strengthen health sector collaboration and coordination across different levels of government, across different nations, within countries, with the private sector, and also with our citizenry. During the past year, we have witnessed the power of collaboration and citizen engagement. If we are to achieve UHC by 2030, the mission must not be one of just the national government alone. It will take the combined effort and close collaboration 
of national as well as county or devolved leadership, religious leaders, civil society organizations, our private sector, and indeed our ordinary citizens. Between our nations, we must collaborate and coordinate. And as I said earlier, we have shown this when the African Union Bureau of our Assembly of Heads of State and Government successfully developed continental COVID-19 strategies and the Africa Medical Supplies Procurement Platform. This we did by working together. Similarly, the unprecedented global response that has enabled us all to develop a framework for confronting the pandemic and to develop vaccines in record time should be harnessed towards securing universal health coverage by 2030. Indeed, I must say that I am a proud African that today our African continent is only weeks behind the developed world in terms of making vaccines available to our citizenry, especially those on the front line. Six, we need to improve health security and as COVID-19 has demonstrated, our global health systems are indeed vulnerable. A health problem in one country can quickly translate into a global catastrophe. We therefore need to redouble our efforts towards achieving universal health care with a greater focus on public health and a reduction in health inequality. Seven. The COVID-19 pandemic has demonstrated that political will and leadership is strongly correlated with successful health responses and a greater resilience in our health systems. And I therefore call upon all leaders on our African continent to give health the highest political commitment and to pursue the attainment of universal health care as a critical driver of social development and economic prosperity. Ladies and gentlemen, I urge us all to reject the pessimism and cynicism that may come from our current circumstances. Instead, let us embrace empowerment that comes from optimism and hope, even in uncertain times. The theme of this conference, the Decade for Action, driving momentum to achieve universal health coverage in Africa presents all of us with an opportunity to reflect, to learn, and indeed to relearn and to re-examine previously deployed health strategies in terms of their effectiveness. Ladies and gentlemen, the achievement of universal health coverage is a personal priority of mine and my administration. Indeed, it is one of the pillars of my administration's social economic development plan, which we have dubbed the Big Four Agenda, and it is also embedded in our Kenya Vision 2030. As I address you today, as I said earlier, Kenyan health workers are receiving COVID-19 vaccines to ensure that they are safe, even as they continue to battle on the front lines of this pandemic. We could not have achieved this without working closely with all of you and indeed with all our partners. And for this, I applaud each and every one of you. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I am informed that this conference will launch a report on the state of UHC in Africa. This review by experts from the continent will tell us how far we have come in the UHC journey and how we can accelerate it. And I, I personally look forward to receiving the report and to working with all of you to achieve this critical agenda. It is now my distinct pleasure and honor to declare this conference officially open and to wish all of you very, very fruitful deliberations. Thank you all.